Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how to rank number one in Google step by step, but this won't be like other generic videos you'll find on YouTube. Instead of me throwing generic tips at you, you're going to see exactly how to rank for a specific keyword. So all you have to do is just follow my live demonstration and your rankings won't prove. So if you're excited about this video, drop a comment below with let's do this and let's jump right in. Hey, so my name is Nathan Gotch. I'm the founder of Gotch SEO and I've led hundreds of successful SEO campaigns and I've trained thousands of SEO professionals in my program, Gotcha SEO Academy. In fact, the simple process I'm about to show you is how we grew client's organic search traffic by 1,352%. So if you're new here, subscribe and hit the bell button so you can get first access to the newest SEO training and tactics. Let's jump right in. So in this live demo, I'm going to show you how I would help a randomly selected local business improve its Google rankings step by step. And the target business is a plumber in Springfield, Illinois, rickrayandsonplumbing.com. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna simply put the target domain into SEM Rush here. And then I just wanna see, does this domain or this client or this campaign they're working on, does it have existing keywords that we can go after? And really there's only two ways to do keyword research. Either you're going to focus on existing keywords if they have keywords that are ranking in the top 100, or if they're a brand new website or they've never done SEO before, you're gonna to have to go down a different path. But in this case, this particular website does have existing organic keywords. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to positions. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on keywords that have bottom of the funnel intent, which means keywords that have a high probability of becoming qualified leads for this particular business. So in this case, it looks like emergency plumber is a very important keyword for this particular business. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're actually gonna to go to the filter by keyword and we're just gonna put emergency plumber in here. And now what we wanna do is we wanna see what the top volume is for that particular keyword phrase. So in this case, it it looks like you really can't go wrong with any of these variations. And we'll be optimizing for both of these anyway, so you don't really have to decide which one you wanna go after, but ultimately sometimes when we're trying to decide what variation is best, typically go with the one that has the best volume. So that's the first thing. We wanna identify these transactional bottom of the funnel keywords. So obviously this one is very important, but there probably are some others, which we can also filter out by Springfield, which will probably show us some other really good keywords that they wanna go after. So it looks like plumbers, Springfield, Illinois, once again, another important keyword they'd probably want to tackle. Bathroom remodeling. It looks like they do bathroom remodeling as well. And it looks like they do garbage disposal repair. So this is an interesting one because this is garbage service Springfield, Illinois, which is not the intent of what this particular page offers. So that's one thing you got to be careful is we don't ever want to target keywords that have poor intent relative to what the particular business is offering. So in this case, garbage service is not the same as garbage disposal repair. These are very different things, very different intent. So this is a keyword we would not want to try to rank for. So we pretty much just want to disregard this because the intent is so off. Now, looking through here, it looks like heating and cooling companies. Yes, they do work with water heaters, but this probably isn't super relevant either. And then also sump pump, Springfield, Illinois. It looks like they do sump pump repair. So we probably want this to be a little more specific, more like sump pump repair, Springfield, Illinois, not so much just sump pump because that could be buying a new sump pump and that may not be something that they offer. It's just important to go through here and look for keywords that are hyper relevant to what they actually offer. Make sure that the variation of that keyword is super granular to the intent of what they actually offer because we only want hyper relevant traffic going to these pages because if it's hyper relevant it's going to have a tremendously high conversion rate so when you're going through keywords always focus on these types of keywords first because these are the keywords that are going to drive the most revenue now the funny part is when you actually optimize for these bottom of the funnel kind of transactional or investigative keywords a part of the process is actually having to build topical relevance to rank for these keywords so naturally you're going to have to go up up the funnel to find these opportunities, which I'll be talking about in a second. But this is the first part, identify these really lucrative keywords. And then the next part of the strategy is gonna figure out how are we actually gonna go about ranking for these particular keywords. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna optimize for technical performance. So what you wanna do is actually run the site audit. So under on page and tech SEO, you're gonna click on the site audit option. And then you're gonna enter the target domain into the site audit settings. Now you can change the limit of check pages. You will have to see how many pages this particular website has. So 
what you can do is you can go copy the domain name like this, and then we'll go into Google. And then if you just do site colon, this will show us how many index pages this particular website has. So in this case, it has 15. So it's not a very big website. So we don't need to do a massive crawl because there just aren't that many pages that exist. So we can actually put this down to 100 and it'll be fine. For everything else, I would do websites just to keep it so that SCM Rush's crawler actually crawls the website and not something else. And then you can keep all this other stuff exactly the same and then just click start site audit. Okay, so once a technical audit is done, you're gonna see this page here and it's gonna show you all kinds of things. So that can be somewhat overwhelming. So let's kind of focus in on a few things that are really, really important. So first of all, crawlability is by far the most important thing because if the website is not crawlable, it is not going to be indexable. And if it is not indexable, you're not gonna be able to rank. So you absolutely need to get this squared away. So let's go ahead and take a look at what SEM Rush is showing us. So based on this, there is not anything that's super alarming. It looks like there's some permanent redirects. That's not a problem as long as they're intentional. And it looks like there's one 404 error. Once again, yes, we should fix that, but it's not gonna make or break the SEO results. And then the most important part here is this section here, which is the pages crawl depth. And we never want this to be more than three clicks deep, especially for a tiny website like this, it should really never exceed two or three clicks. So in this case, everything looks good. Now, the next thing we're gonna look at is the core web vitals because overall the user experience a very foundational element. So we need to make sure that the user experience of page loading speed is really on point because if it's not, anything else we do after that is not really gonna matter because that needs to be really, really good. So let's take a look. So based on SEM Rush's analysis, and they're really just pulling from the Google API to get this information, but ultimately this website is not doing super well on Core Web Vitals. So this is definitely something we'd wanna go through and clean up and get this all optimized because anything that's going to negatively affect user experience is likely going to hurt SEO performance. So from there, you can just click on the issues tab and then we can see some of the issues that SEM Rush has brought up. It says there are two internal links that are broken. That's not gonna be something that's gonna really destroy the rankings or destroy the SEO, but it is something you probably do want to tackle. I'd say it's more like a level three type of action, meaning it's not super important, but it's something you should do when time permits, ultimately. We already know there's a 404, and but overall, there really aren't a whole lot of technical issues, which is great. Now, there are some notices. Looks like there's a few redirects. There's one page, only has one incoming internal link. And this can be something that we would want to fix. But overall, this website's doing pretty well from a technical performance. So there's really not a whole lot to do other than just optimizing for core web vitals. So that's a very good thing. And when you're working with smaller websites, there's not usually going to be a whole lot of technical issues. And if there are, they're going to be pretty easy to fix. So I would focus heavily on core web vitals in this case, and that should correct pretty much most of the issues that this website is encountering from a technical SEO perspective. So before you ever do on-page SEO, you should make sure that the content itself on the page is sufficient. So what you should do is go to on-page and tech SEO and then go to SEO content template and then enter the primary keyword that you wanna rank for. So in this case, it's gonna be Plumber Springfield, Illinois, and then click create SEO template. So once it's done, then you can see some of the key recommendations based on the top 10 for this primary keyword. So you see the related keywords you'll wanna tackle. You'll see the backlinks that you wanna acquire that other competitors have acquired. You'll see the average readability score. And also you'll see how long the content should be, or at least how long you should aim for. So in this case, 717 words is appropriate. Now, what we wanna do is actually go up here to the real-time content check, and you're gonna to wanna to paste the content from the page that you're trying to rank in this editor. Okay, so as you'll see, I just pasted this in here without any formatting at all, just to keep it really, really simple. Now, what we wanna do is see ultimately what is SEM Rush telling us? So in this case, it looks like overall the SEO score is not great. The readability is not terrific. And overall, the originality is not great either. But keep in mind, the originality is not really gonna make sense because what SEM Rush is gonna do is it's actually gonna crawl our existing page and it's gonna say that it's not original. But in this case, we know that it is. So I wouldn't worry about that particular score. So a couple of key things here, just keep in mind, because I paid pasted this in here without any formatting. So a lot of these recommendations are not gonna be accurate. Ultimately, this score is not gonna be accurate either. So for example, the article has no headline yet. Well, that's not true, it definitely does have a headline. But the one section I would be looking at here is the SEO section. So the primary keyword is not really being used in this content at all. And also any additional relevant keywords are not being used either. So plumbers in Springfield, plumbers Springfield, Illinois, these are basically just variations of the same keyword. 
So once again, we're gonna to need to add those keywords to this particular content to be able to really perform well. And in the next part of this, where I show you the on-page SEO, I'll show you how to add those keywords in there. But overall, as far as the content goes, it looks like it's long enough. It's actually a little too long, according to SEMrush. So there is an opportunity to maybe cut it down if there's some stuff in here that's not super relevant. But overall, the content itself is probably fine. It's not great. You know, a lot of room for improvement. The plugin I'm using here is Grammarly to fix this. So if you do have Grammarly, this would be a good idea to go through and clean this up. You can also use Hemingway. You can take this content, we'll copy it, we'll put it into Hemingway. And the easiest way to make it better is just go through these simple recommendations on Hemingway to make the content better and ultimately make it easier to read. And you'll see there's 11 out of 150 sentences are very difficult to read. Six are hard to read. So there's a lot of opportunity to improve this content overall. This is what we personally do. So whenever we're trying to improve a page, what we do is we run it through Hemingway, we clean it up here, then we run it through Grammarly, we clean it up there, and then once that's done, then we do the on-page SEO. But keep in mind, the content itself needs to be different and unique compared to the competitors that we're going after. And that's the most critical part. It doesn't matter if you do all this, if the content itself isn't actually unique, that's really important. So overall, this content, there's a lot of room for improvement. We would be excited about this because ultimately they're doing pretty well. We look at the keywords, their ranking looks like position 29 for Plumber Springfield, Illinois, with the content being not the best that it can be. And the overall on-page SEO performance is not great. So improve the content and optimize it, which I'll be in a second. And there's really no reason that this page shouldn't go up in rankings. Okay. So now that we know what keywords we want to go after, and there aren't a whole lot of technical issues, what we want to do now is we actually want to optimize the on-page SEO. So we want to optimize the existing pages before we even think about creating any new pages. So what you can do is just go right into SEMrush, go to the on-page and tech SEO section, and then click on on-page SEO checker, and then create the project. And then once you've done that, go ahead and click continue. And then SEMrush is going to crawl and collect the keywords that they're already ranking well for. So you can, of course, do the auto import, but if you wanted, you can also do a manual type of situation as well. But in this case, the keyword profile isn't huge. So we'll go ahead and just let SEMrush pull the ones that they're already ranking for. And it looks like the ones that we showed earlier, Plumbers, Springfield, Illinois is in there. So we'll want to go ahead and tackle that. So based on SEMrush's analysis, they believe that we could increase organic search traffic by over 1000% if we implement these changes that they are recommending. Now, one thing I would do recommend is go ahead and connect Google Analytics because it's gonna show you the bounce rate and the total time spent on the pages and other UX type of ideas. So it's definitely something you do wanna do if you wanna get more comprehensive data about each individual page. Now, there's a lot you can do here, but one thing we wanna do is we wanna focus in on the pages that matter the most. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go into the optimization ideas and find the page that we're trying to optimize. So in this case, we're going to want to optimize the home page, And we know that we want to rank specifically for plumbing Springfield, Illinois. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit keywords and we're actually going to get rid of the ones that are not relevant to the homepage. So we'll get rid of all of these and we're just going to focus in on the primary one that we want to rank for, which is plumbers Springfield, Illinois. So we'll go ahead and do that. All right, so now SEMrush is gonna show us all of the potential opportunities for on-page SEO on this particular page and keyword target that we're going after. Now, in this case, they say there is no keyword cannibalization, so that's a great thing. It means there are no other pages on the site that are targeting this specific keyword, which is Plumber Springfield, Illinois, or any variation. That's a really good thing. Then that's always the first step when we're thinking about how to optimize an existing page. We just don't want there to be any keyword cannibalization because ultimately, if you have that, it's going to compete against the primary page you're actually trying to rank. So it's not a good thing. And and ultimately looking at this, it looks like they want us to include the target keyword in the title tag and in the meta description, in the body and in the H1 tag. So it looks like overall, this page is not optimized particularly well. And you can come to that conclusion based on what SEMrush is telling us, but we're of course gonna look at it from a manual perspective as well. And it looks like there's also some opportunities to enrich the page content, which is adding more topically relevant keyword variations to the page ultimately. So there's a bunch of opportunities here for that. And then we need to also acquire backlinks. And ultimately, we want to acquire backlinks that the competitors have to at least match them. But then if we want to beat them, we actually have to acquire more backlinks than them because we want to show Google that we're the ultimate authority in this particular vertical and for this particular keyword. But more on that later. So now we're just going to go through and see if we can optimize this page better from just a pure on-page SEO perspective. Now, of course, we do want to look at it from a pure content perspective and overall user experience and overall the design and, and user interface. But 
ultimately right now we're just going to focus on purely the on-page SEO. Now right here this actually looks pretty good. The design's pretty good. It looks like they have a lot of kind of bottom of the funnel type of content which is exactly what they should be doing. So overall this is pretty good. It probably will work. It just needs a little refinement and a little better optimization. So when we look at this you can use this detailed plugin which is a free plugin to see what the title's like but if you actually just do right click while you're on Google Chrome go to view page source and then search for title you'll be able to see it in here as well. Now this title here is not what I would personally do if we were trying to rank for the keywords that we're going after. We'll go ahead and just do inspect here and this is kind of a funny thing that you can do in Google Chrome is you can actually change this to see what it's like. So first of all we want to put the primary keyword that we're going after which is plumbers Springfield Illinois and just to make it more natural we'll do plumbers in Springfield Illinois and one thing to actually make the variation even better is we'll do the 24 7 just like they have because it's probably something they found that's good and then we could do 24 7 plumbers in Springfield Illinois now if you wanted you could do the near me query but more than likely that's probably not driving a whole lot of traffic but if you wanted to but the problem is that you're starting to split this primary keyword up so I don't usually like doing that but overall this title is pretty good because you'll see the only slight variation that I've changed here is just the 24 7 plumbers near me in Springfield Illinois and one thing we could do if we want to try to inject even more keywords in there is we could do actually spell out Illinois here and then we can do the acronym like that so now it's 24 7 plumbers near me in Springfield Illinois now we have the full phrase in here now if you want to get more granular you can make it just plumbers Springfield Illinois without anything else if you want to get more specific and we want to do it like this we could just literally do plumbers Springfield Illinois like this and then just the brand name like that and this is also a very effective format because now we're optimized specifically for that keyword phrase that we want to go after and ultimately that's going to improve performance now what they're doing with the 24 7 and the near me type of variations they're trying to capture more long tail traffic but ultimately if you mention those on the page in other areas you're probably going to rank for those anyway so you don't really need to jam them into the title but if you want and it is a low competition keyword you certainly can do that but I don't really think the plumbing repair is one that's necessary but also we know based on the keyword research that plumber is the primary variation that attracts the most searches so you really want to optimize for that super well so optimizing for the correct variation of this word is important so instead of plumbing we want to do plumbers because when people are searching for plumbing issues they're not looking for plumbing they're looking for plumbers they're looking for the person that's able to solve that problem so those slight nuances really do matter so that's the first thing is we want to optimize the title tag and then we also want to optimize the meta description as well so putting the primary keyword in the meta description in a natural way also very important as well but then after that once we've tackled those two parts we want to optimize the h1 tag so if we go back to the detailed plugin we'll look at headings you'll see that their h1 tag is buried way below on this page so the h1 tag is way down here but proper user experience we want to have the h1 tag up here and we want it to have the primary keyword in it so just by adding plumber springfield illinois in the h1 tag and pushing it above the fold that's going to have a huge impact on their overall keyword performance so very easy fix but it can have a huge huge impact and then after that that we also want to include the primary keyword in the first sentence on the page too so I would include it in the h1 up here and then also in this little sentence here now this looks like it is a heading if we go ahead and look so first of all they're using too many headings you don't need this many headings you could just use one h1 and then all of these can be paragraph tags and then you just change the style of them these don't all need to be headings so we can have an h1 a paragraph and then we include the primary keyword in the h1 and the first paragraph and then after that you don't need to do anything super aggressive you can include it maybe one more time down here and ultimately if the address is actually in Springfield Illinois so that's terrific and then the last piece of this is is this using schema markup so we'll go ahead and look if the address is and it's not it's not using structured data so I would highly recommend using schema to mark up this address just so Google can understand this page even better ultimately and having more data to understand the page better so that's really that all that I would do and then ultimately making sure the word count is appropriate given this particular query then it looks like they have a video which is terrific most websites don't have videos so they're already way ahead of the game there and overall this looks great I would avoid using any stock photos so hopefully this these are pictures from them actually operating on the job that's super important always use real life pictures from what you're actually doing but overall this is a low competition keyword so just by adding the keyword to some core important locations and adding some variations here to support natural language processing NLP they're gonna do a pretty good job but the most important thing is adding that exact exact phrase to the title, the meta description, 
location, the H1, and the first sentence. If we can get them in those locations, you're gonna perform substantially better. Okay, so once you found your keywords, you optimize for technical performance, you've improved the content, and you've performed on-page SEO, the next part of this process is we wanna to try to build more topical relevance. And what that means is we need to create new pages around the overall topic that we're trying to rank in. So in this case, it's gonna be plumbing. The goal of doing this is ultimately these supporting assets will drive relevance to our core keyword that we're actually trying to rank for, which is plumbers, Springfield, Illinois. So the best way to do this on the local level, there's a few different ways. I'll just show you a couple quick ones. The first one is take the exact keyword that you wanna rank for and put it into Google. And we're gonna see what is Google showing? Is there anything here that we can create content about, right? So a couple things, we'll go down here and the one thing we wanna look for are SERP features. So what is showing in Google? So ultimately right here with Yelp, we can see what are people saying about plumbing services in Springfield, Illinois. So obviously we can't really create content about that, but this one here, what are some of businesses with large number of reviews in Springfield, Illinois? Once again, we can't really create content about that, but we're going on the right track. We're still looking for opportunities. Now we'll go down here. We'll keep looking for other SERP features that might exist. So as we scroll down, we see Thumbtack and we see that there's two opportunities here maybe to create some content. So these are ideas that I would add to your list to possibly create content around these topics. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind is if we can make the content geo-targeted relevant, it's going to be way more effective. Now, in this case, what are the signs of a burst pipe? Well, a burst pipe is a burst pipe and it's not really going to change depending on the location. Usually the variables that cause a burst pipe are pretty much going to be the same across really anywhere. Now, one thing we could do is when we start to think about, okay, what are some ways to create really linkable content on the local level? I would start to think about specifically in Springfield, Illinois, at what frequency do burst pipes happen? How often do pipes burst in Springfield, Illinois? And what are some of the variables in Springfield, Illinois that cause burst pipes? So we could probably think that freezing is a part of it. There's other variables that would likely cause it. So getting really specific to the location whenever you can is going to be way better and way more effective to build topical relevance. But ultimately, anything that we can do that's really data-driven. So if we can have some sort of data-driven posts about burst pipes in Springfield, Illinois in 2021, or a history of burst pipes in Springfield, Illinois, then now we're really building tons of topical relevance, but not just that. We're also creating something that's really linkable on the local level. So we could send that to local governments. We could send that to colleges in that area. We could really find tons of opportunities to drive links to this really interesting asset that's actually helpful. It's data driven. So data is the best way to acquire links. We'll talk more about that, but ultimately this is what you should be thinking about as far as creating more topical relevance. Then one thing you can do is actually take the core keyword and put it through this tool, which is also asked. So what it's going to do, it's going to crawl through Google. And so based on this, there weren't actually any results at all. And that's okay. That's not a problem because we search something very specific. But if you want, what you can do is just make this a little more broad. So we'll just do plumber like this and we'll see what comes up. And what the tool is going to do is it's going to search Google to look for the people also ask section. It's going to give you all of these ideas. So what you can do is start to look through these and see if there's any opportunities to make these geo-targeted relevant specific to Springfield, Illinois, because we don't really want to target these on a national level. Like for example, what do plumbers really do? That's not a keyword we're going to go after because ultimately that's going to be just nationally focused. It's not going to be specific to the location. Now this one here, how much does a plumber cost? This is a very interesting one because how much a plumber cost is going to be very different in each individual location. So how much a plumber is in Los Angeles is going to be different than how much it is in Springfield, Illinois. So this is an opportunity to create some sort of informational piece of content that's specific to Springfield, Illinois. You could create an infographic, you could show specific data, you can comparing Springfield versus other states. There's just so much opportunity just on this little query alone. So this is the way that you need to be thinking about is ultimately using these kind of national terms to come up with ideas that are specific to that location. Okay, so everything I've shown you so far is to be able to rank in Google's organic search, traditional organic search results. So that's actually below the local pack. So everything here, I've been basically showing you how to improve performance in this section. Now, keep in mind, by improving performance in the organic results, you're naturally gonna do better in the local pack as well. But in this case, when we look up Plumber Springfield, Illinois, they're already ranking terrifically well. They're doing a really nice job. And one thing to keep in mind here is if you were one of their competitors, their review count is superior to everything 
everyone else. And reviews are really, really important for local pack rankings. They really are dominating on this front and they have a very high score on top of it. So lots of reviews, high score, and they have an address specifically in the location that they're going after. So when we look at this, they're specifically in Springfield, Illinois, and they're optimized with the appropriate category, which is plumber. So they're pretty much doing everything right. And they have a bunch of unique images too, which is what I always recommend doing, having lots of unique images, and they should just continue to add to this. Ultimately, they would probably really benefit by adding more images of them actually on the job. So every time they send a person out to do work, they should be taking pictures on the job of the work that they're doing and just be populating this listing, making it deeper and deeper and deeper. And ultimately, they can start to build a moat, which makes it difficult for the competitors really to ever catch up. So the more comprehensive your GMB listing is, the better you will be. So overall, they're doing a really nice job. One thing I would say is it looks like they're not responding to the reviews. So I would have someone on their team go through and respond to every single review. It's something very simple. Just, oh, thank you so much, Pamela. We had a great time working with you and we look forward to working with you in the future. You know, real simple stuff. But what we're doing is we're adding depth to this listing. Every time we respond to a review, we're adding more depth and more depth. And now one other thing too, it doesn't look like they're doing any GMB posting as well. With Google My Business, you can do posts. And when you post a particular post with GMB, it expires in seven days. So you should really be publishing every single week a new GMB post. What this is going to do, it's not necessarily going to directly impact your rankings, but it's going to add depth to the listing. It's going to add activity to the listing and it could drive more engagement on the listing. So the more engagement there is on this listing, the better it will perform. So we really want that. Lots of engagement, lots of dwell time, lots of people clicking around. This is all stuff that Google's measuring. So really, really important. We want more engagement. So if they want to maintain this ranking, then they should be pushing really hard with those things I just mentioned. And also FAQ as well. If there are people who are asking questions on the job, maybe you could have them go ask actually in the GMB as well. So overall, they're ranking. So there's not really anything else to do as far as general optimization, but just as far as to stack different ideas on top of this, there's some opportunities for them to really build a powerful moat, which will basically make it impossible for the competitors to ever catch up. And then the last thing you can do outside of optimizing Google My Business is you can see what the overall listings are online for this particular business. So we want to make sure that all the listings online are 100% accurate from an NAP perspective. So that means name, address, and phone. We want that to be consistent across the internet. So SEMrush actually makes it super easy because all you have to do is just go and find the particular business that we're trying to improve and we'll find it in here by searching. And we found Rick Ray and Sons Plumbing. So we'll go ahead and take look and see how they're doing as far as how consistent their listings are. So overall, it looks like there are some opportunities to improve their citations across the internet. So it looks like they really are just missing a lot of citations. So we need to go through, create new citations. But as we go through, we're also going to want to improve and make these citations more accurate if there are any issues. So we just want to have a lot of consistency. So it looks like they used to have a different address here, 500 North Street. So you would want to go through, clean these all up, make sure they're 100% accurate to the location that they're going out. After, which is this 1514 West Jefferson Street. So these slight variations of the W abbreviation versus West, that's not going to make a difference. But what really is going to make a difference is having the completely wrong address, maybe even having the wrong actual name of the business as well. So it looks like they put Rick Ray Plumbing and Sewer. Now they're Rick Ray Sons Plumbing. So want to go through, make it consistent to whatever the Google My Business listing is. As long as it matches a Google My Business listing, you're going to be golden. So go through through, clean these up. You can, of course, do this manually, or you can use SEMrush to distribute this info, whichever way you want. But I recommend just to automate this and make the investment because it can be very time consuming to go through and do this yourself. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is analyze the existing link profile for this particular website. So what you want to do is go to link building and then go to backlink audit and then start the backlink audit. Now to get the maximum amount of data possible, I do recommend connecting Google Search Console as well. So once the audit is complete, we can go through and just see what the overall toxicity score. And according to SEMrush, there's nothing too severe here, just because they really don't have a whole lot of links in the first place. They only have actually seven referring domains. So overall, there's nothing to be too concerned about. And even if there was at this small of a scale, it's not going to be detrimental to their performance. So in this case, where there's just really not a whole lot of link data, it just means that there needs to be more link building. So there will be a video below this one that you can watch 
watch that shows you all kinds of link building tactics that you can use. But in this case, what I would recommend doing is driving links to linkable assets. So like I mentioned earlier, coming up with ideas that are specific to the location and specific to the topic that you're trying to rank and making those very linkable, typically using data or infographics or something that people really like to reference or link to, that's going to really help with the link building efforts much more. You don't only make it really natural. We don't want to just go out and get links in an unnatural way and drive them to the homepage or drive them to service pages, which people don't normally link to. So that is how you rank number one at Google step by step. If you got value from this video, please like it right now and subscribe to get first access to the next SEO training. Thank you so much for watching and all of the previous videos in this series will be below. Okay, we'll talk soon.